I'm wearing gloves. That must mean we're playing with chemicals today. Let's do a shootout of various black oxide coatings and see which one coats the best. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So you just spent a bunch of time machining a nice piece of steel. Let's say you made something as simple as a T-nut and you want to protect it. Well, the obvious choice is a cold bluing solution, a black oxide solution. I recently made a carriage lock for my PM1228 and after I machined it, I sandblasted it and coated it with this solution right here. It's called Jax. In the past, I've used various forms of perma blue, and then I've also used Caswell's black oxide solution, and I've had good results with all of them. Well, that's not completely true. I have not used the super blue yet. I actually went to the store to buy some perma blue, and I saw they had super blue, and I figured why do a test for three things when we can do four? So this is the setup. I have four pieces of steel here. You can see that they've been stamped. It's probably not super clear. There's a C on that one, a J on that one, a P on that one, and an S on that one. All four of these pieces of steel were sandblasted to eliminate the mill scale. And then on one side, they were polished. Now, I found with black oxide coating that a polished surface doesn't coat as well as a sandblasted surface. So more often than not, I sandblast, but I figured this would be a great test for all of these solutions. After I sandblasted and polished these pieces, I used this right here, just a cleaner degreaser. Now I think any cleaner degreaser would work. In the past, I've used brake clean, I've used paint prep, just something that goes in, cleans, degreases, and then evaporates without leaving a residue. The chemical I just showed you came with the kit that I bought, so I figured might as well use it. The directions are fairly similar with all of these products. However, with the Caswell, it's more designed to soak parts. And it's a bigger volume, a bigger solution. I mean, obviously I've got a bucket here. To make this test as equal as possible, we're going to put a liberal coat of each of the chemicals on the steel that I have prepared. And then we're gonna let it soak for about five minutes before wiping it off. That is kind of the best of both worlds between going with the submersion method and going with the brush it on method. Also, I didn't wanna mix my chemicals and corrupt the test. So I have actually marked each of my paintbrushes with a letter indicating which solution goes to which one. So let's dive right in, let's start doing some black oxide coating. Now this Caswell solution I've had for years. I've used it to coat lots of parts. It's still good. You may have seen a video that I did where I actually put some of this in an ultrasonic cleaner and it significantly affected the color of the coat. So I know this solution is still good and the rest of these solutions are relatively new. Caswell first. And the Caswell is definitely diluted with water and will take some time to blacken everything. And so again, this is why I'm applying it and then gonna let it soak or let it set so that we have a fair comparison. So I wanted to do this as scientifically as possible and use the same technique for coating all four pieces of mild steel. The problem is I'm not getting a uniform coat with the Caswell and honestly I'm not getting the type of coating that I usually see with the Caswell. It could be that this solution has started to wear out and is not as potent as it was. Or it could be that really this solution is meant for soaking and agitation. So I'm actually going to do what the direction said to do and submerge it in the liquid and swirl it around and see if we can get a little better coating. Need to do the backside, so let's go ahead and flip these over.
All right, after soaking, the black oxide is out. We're gonna let all that sit for just a minute and then I will scrub them down with a piece of paper towel and we will examine the differences. All right, let's start cleaning these off. Now, as typical with my experience with this Caswell is as you rub it, especially on a shined surface, it tends to come off. I mean, we have a little bit of, of coverage there, but it's definitely not staying on completely. Now, the other side where we used the sandblaster or where it wasn't polished after sandblasting, that finish is staying a whole lot better and the color is holding a whole lot better. Same is looking to be true of the jacks. As I rub the polished side, we are losing a lot of that black oxide finish. And again, that's why I sandblast anything before I coat it. I find that the sandblasting gives a far superior coat. Perma blue. A nice black finish for the moment. Oh, and the perma blue is actually holding to the polished finish a little better than the Jax and the Caswell. And finally, the super blue. All right, after wiping everything down, this is the Sandblasted side, the Caswell looks pretty good. Now again, just keep in mind, this wasn't a totally scientific test. The Caswell is designed to be dipped, and so I really had to dip it because it is diluted. These others are meant to be brushed on or applied, so it's not quite an A to A comparison, but it does give a generally good idea. The Jax, similar finish. Very similar as far as color and depth. It'll be interesting to see once we oil these how they end up looking. The Perma Blue actually is a little bit darker. It's got a little more color than the other two. And then when I go to the Super Blue, it's actually less dark than the Perma Blue. Now, the difference between these two coatings is this is your general metal bluing touch up solution. And this one is for hardened steel and alloy steel. Now, these are all mild steels. So it stands to reason that the general perma blue would work better on mild steel than the super blue. Flip it over, look at the back side. Those finishes, in my opinion, are pretty negligible. They all wiped off a lot of the finish. They all are not very black. They're a little bit gray. And they're all consistent or inconsistent in their uniform application, this one being the worst. Now, I don't know if I didn't get this one as clean or if it was just a reaction with the solution in the metal. But ultimately, the result is the same, that if you want a nice matte black finish, you really need to sandblast. That is far better than a polished surface. All right, let's apply a little oil and see what kind of results that makes. If you're going to make an application like this and put it on a polished steel, you probably want to uh, apply multiple times and maybe even buff it out in between. Use a little steel wool. That's probably going to get you your best result on a polished piece of steel. All right, the results are in. Coated, cleaned, oiled on a sandblasted surface. Unless the camera is picking up something that I can't see, those all look pretty much the same. Let me put a little more light on it and see if that changes anything. And looks like the Caswell is a little spotty. It's not as uniform. It looks like under the extra light that the perma blue is actually a little darker. The jacks and the super blue on the sandblasted surface are pretty much identical. Let's even set them side by side. Yeah, the any differences between those two are negligible. All right, now let's flip everything over. 
on a polished surface, the Caswell is the most uniform, hands down. That is actually the best of the four here. The Perma Blue is the second best. And the Jax and the Super Blue are, again, similar, fairly negligible. So if you're going to go with a polished finish, I would probably either go with the Caswell or the Perma Blue. Cost comparison, there is definitely a difference in price. The Caswell kit is fairly expensive. You're looking at well over $100. The replacement solution concentrate, which is the bare minimum you need to set up the Caswell Black Oxide, is like $30 for a quart. Now that quart does mix with water and does give you the ability to dip bigger parts. So in some cases, that is an advantage. The Jax, I paid $30 for that box of Jax. Now it's 16 fluid ounces. So I'm paying about $2 an ounce, a little less than for the solution from the Jax. The Perma Blue is only three ounces for $7. So comparable, those two, give or take a little bit, are in the same price range roughly. And then the Super Blue was $10 for three ounces. So cost-wise, again, we're fairly consistent straight across the board. But the nice thing is with the concentrate on the Caswell, you do have that option for dipping larger parts. Ultimately, the results are similar enough that I think any one of these solutions is probably going to do the job for you. On top of the fact that they're all probably pretty much the same chemical. The concept is the same, that we are applying a chemical that reacts with steel and basically causes a stable layer of rust to form on the material. And then it gives it a black coating. And that black coating is also great for holding oils and other rust preventatives. So it creates a protective barrier and it helps hold oils that continue that protection. Ultimately in the shop, you're working with cutting oils, that kind of things. Things are going to stay fairly lubricated, fairly oiled. And I really think any one of these would probably work pretty well for you. I hope this video helps. I don't know that it helps all that much because, well, frankly, the results are pretty inconclusive. But it is nice to know that if you pick up any one of these chemicals to do black oxide work on your machine projects, that they're all going to function about the same. I would love to test the corrosion resistance of these, but I'm not sure the best way to do that. I don't have any way to introduce humidity that other than just regular moisture that's in the air. And so I may do a follow-up sometime down the road. I may just hang these somewhere, let them do their thing and, and see if we get any rust to begin to develop. But ultimately, I think, especially since the, there's not a lot of moisture in the air where I live, that we're not going to see a huge difference between the four. Now, if I was in a high humidity area, there would definitely be the potential to see a difference between the four. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments, and I would love to get back to you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.